Last Friday we addressed the issue of Sunan al kawniya cosmic ways or measures or causes through which Allah Azza wa Jal governs and runs His creation. And we gave an example of that which is the steady conflict between truth and falsehood. And another such sunnah from the sunnah of Allah Azza wa Jal, which is directly related to that steady conflict between truth and falsehood, is that of the inheritance of power and authority on earth. You see, all nations strive very hard for different reasons to obtain authority and achieve power on earth. Some for worldly matters, or most for that matter, like possessing or controlling or enjoying resources. Others for religious matters. And therefore, the Muslims, the Muslim Ummah, are worthier of striving to achieve and inherit power and authority on earth. Despite the weak state the Muslim Ummah is going through right now, yet we as Muslims have our trust placed in Allah in whose hand the control of everything. Allah Azza wa Jal promised that He will inherit, make us inherit this power and authority. Saying, أَنَّ الْأَرْضَ يَرِثُهَا عِبَادِيَ الصَّالِحُونَ That my pious slaves will inherit the authority upon the earth. So we trust the promise of Allah Azza wa Jal. And we also trust the promise and the glad tidings given by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the sunan of an Imam al-Tirmidhi which was classified as sound by al-Arna'ut rahmatullahi alayhi narrated by Ubayy ibn Ka'b the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Bashir hadihi al-ummata بِالسَّنَاءِ وَالْرِفْعَةِ وَالْدِينِ وَالنَّصْرِ وَالْتَمْكِينِ فِي الْأَرْضِ Give this ummah glad tidings. The Muslim ummah. Glad tidings of what? And he listed five things. صلى الله عليه وسلم. Number one, السَّنَاء A lofty status. Number two, Al-Rif'ah, high ranks in this world and the hereafter. Number three, Ad-Deen, establishment of their religion. Number four, Al-Nasru, victory over their enemies. And number five, Wat-Tamkeenu fil ard establishing authority upon the earth. So we trust the words of Allah, the Almighty. We trust the words of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. However, we must be qualified to be deserving of this promise and these glad tidings of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. See, qualifying to inherit power and authority on earth is challenging, it's demanding, it takes a lot of commitment and devotion and sacrifice, but it's not impossible. Just like all the sunan, all the cosmic ways of Allah Azza wa Jal, there are conditions to be met and means to be utilized 
and then the result will unquestionably happen. It's an obligation upon each one of us to strive hard in order to realize this inheritance of, of authority upon the earth. It is going to happen with us or without us. But it will happen at the time that Allah decrees and only when the Muslims are deserving to lead humanity. We're weak, yes, but it's due to our own shortcomings. We want out, we want a way out of this oppression, of this weak state that we're in and suffering from. Allah Azza wa Jal says, In Allah la yughayru ma bi qawmin hatta yughayru ma bi anfusihim. Allah will not change the state or condition of a people until they change what's in them. So what are the conditions? What are the conditions to fulfill in order to be deserving of this inheritance of authority and power. Allah Azza wa Jal clarified this in the Quran. And listen attentively, it's very easy. The harder part is the application of the verse. وَعَدَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ لَيَسْتَخْلِفَنَّهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ كَمَا اسْتَخْلَفَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ وَلَيُمَكِّنَنَّ لَهُمْ دِينَهُمُ الَّذِي ارْتَضَى لَهُمْ وَلَيُبَدِّلَنَّهُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ خَوْفِهِمْ أَمْنًا يَعْبُدُونَنِي لَا يُشْرِكُونَ بِي شَيْئًا Notice I listed two and then three and then two with my fingers and I'll explain. Allah says this in the Quran which means Allah has promised those who have believed amongst you and done righteous deeds, believed and done righteous deeds. He's promised them things as a result. What are these things? He will grant them, surely will grant them succession to authority like he has granted those before them. And he will establish therein for them their religion. The religion he has approved for them. And he will surely substitute the state of fear with that of security. Number three, Number four, worship me, provided that they worship me. And not ascribe any partner to me. Notice how Allah Azza wa Jal listed the result before He finished listing the conditions. As a motivation, as a way of encouragement. Allah Azza wa Jal does that all the time with regards to all obligations. Don't you know, don't we all know that one of the pillars of Islam is fasting Ramadan? Yet Allah Azza wa Jal promised us a great reward for fasting it. Though if we don't, we're sinning and we must fast it. But to encourage and motivate us, مَنْ صَامَ رَمَضَانَ إِيمَانًا وَحْتِسَابًا غُفِرْ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ دَمِهِ Whoever fasts Ramadan with firm faith and with hope for the reward, Allah will forgive all his previous sins. So Allah listed three results of fulfilling the conditions in the middle. Authority. Before he listed the rest of the conditions to achieve it. Establishing the religion and the state of security which every person strives to live in. 
Now let's go into the details of these conditions. minkum. Those who have believed. So belief is a precondition of approval for any deed in Islam. True and sincere faith in Allah Azza wa Jal is a condition of acceptance before all deeds. However, this faith, the individual's faith, fluctuates up and down. As the Prophet وسلم, said to Abu Bakr, وَلَكِنْ سَاعَةً وَسَاعَةً At times it will go up and at times it will go down. Right? However, some people weaken to an unacceptable state. See, faith weakens due to sins, due to people who strive hard from the people of falsehood to misguide and deviate people off the track, or threats from the enemies of Islam. There are numerous reasons why faith can weaken. But some people reach a state which is not acceptable. Allah describes them saying, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ عَلَى حَرْفِ And amongst the people is he who worships Allah on an edge, meaning he's not firm, he's not steady, he's not stable. فَإِنَ صَابَهُ خَيْرٌ اِطْمَأَنَّ بِهِ When goodness befalls him, he's reassured with it. When أَصَابَتْنُ فِتْنَةٌ لِنْقَلَبَ عَلَى وَجْهِهِ And if he's struck with a calamity, he turns on his face, meaning he relapses to the opposite direction. خَسِرَ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ Losing this world and the hereafter. That's not the faith that we're talking about. We're talking about a steady, firm faith. Such as that of Sa'd ibn Mu'adh رضي الله عنه one of the leaders of the Ansar. You know the battle of, and this is in the book of Imam Muslim, the battle of Badr was not intended to be a battle, as you all know. So the Prophet ﷺ went out from Medina without the intention, but Allah had decreed that it happens. So when news came and they were confronting the enemies or had to confront the enemies, the Prophet ﷺ did not have an agreement with the Ansar to protect him outside the boundaries of Medina. The, the, the agreement was to shelter him and protect him within. So he kept saying, advise me people, advise me people, seeking the statement of the Ansar. So Abu Bakr stood and Umar stood and everybody stood from the Muhajireen. And the Prophet ﷺ continued to say, advise me. So Sa'd ibn Mu'adh realized what the Prophet ﷺ was trying to do. He said, perhaps you're seeking our statement, our position. And then he said, we will not tell you like the children of Israel said to Musa, اذهب أنت وربك فقاتلا إنا ها هنا قاعدون You and your Lord go and fight we're saying right here Rather we will say اذهب أنت وربك فقاتلا إنا معك ممقاتلون Go with your Lord and fight We will fight with you We swear by Allah O Messenger of Allah If you take us and go in the depth of the sea We will all go with you and not a single man will stay behind. We are people who are patient through, through battles, who are firm and steadfast during wars, and we do not hate that tomorrow you take us to face the enemy. That's the type of faith that is meant by the ayah. Firm faith. Number two, وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَ See, righteous deeds, good deeds, are a manifestation of faith. They're proof of what's hidden in the heart and what a lot of us claim with the tongue. A lot of times Allah Azza wa Jal coupled 
different acts of worship with faith. Now, again, acts of worship include obligations and recommendations as well. In other words, it has to become the description of the individual. The general conduct of that person is that he is a practicing Muslim. Number three, Ya'budunani, worship me, ibadah or ubudiyah, servitude to Allah Azza wa Jal, must be fulfilled and established by that Muslim or by every Muslim in the heart and in actions. One of the most beautiful definitions of servitude I've come across is that of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah. He said, servitude is to completely submit with humility to Allah with complete love, willingly. So we have to willingly submit to Allah. Coupling that with full and complete love to Allah Azza wa Jal. Number two, in regards to ibadah and ubudiyah, worship and servitude, is that one must shun and reject any legislation that is other than the legislation of Allah or opposes the legislation of Allah. Number three, which is very important and it comes into the details of our daily lives, is that we must make Islam the judge over every aspect of our lives. Allah Azza wa Jal addressed Muhammad to say that to the companions. Saying, فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ But know with your Lord, or by your Lord, they will not truly believe. حَتَّى يُحَكِّمُوكَ فِي مَا شَجَرَ بَيْنَهُمْ Until they make you judge concerning that over which they dispute amongst themselves. ثُمَّ لَا يَجِدُوا فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَرَجًا مِمَّا قَضَيْتْ And then they don't find any discomfort regarding your judgment. وَيُسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا And then fully submit. Submit with full submission. But we have to make sure that this sharia, these legislations that we're talking about or referring to are practiced according to the understanding of the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why? Because they were the students of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who saw the application, the practical application of the religious texts and received their directions and instructions directly and straight from the mouth of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or saw him with their own eyes doing it. Number four condition Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned in the verse, لا يشركون بي شيئا Shirk. Ascribing partners to Allah Azza wa Jal. See, shirk is directing any act of worship in any form of way to other than Allah Azza wa Jal. Whether it is something in your heart like fear, like hope, like trust. These are actions of the heart. One can fear people more than Allah Azza wa Jal. That's a form of shirk. As a matter of fact, Ibn al-Qayyim said, there are actions of the heart that are more destructive to one's faith than his physical sins. 
or be it the physical form of shirk. But shirk is more comprehensive and more general and more encompassing than the one form known to many people, which is bowing and prostrating to an idol of some sort. In the book of Al-Imam Al-Tirmidhi in his Sunan, and it was classified as sound by Al-Albani, may Allah have mercy on them all. Adi ibn Hatim narrates that when he heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam reciting, اتخذوا أحبارهم ورهبانهم أرباب من دون الله والمسيح ابن مريم they took their scholars and monks as lords beside Allah, as well as the Messiah, the son of Mary. He said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, we never used to worship them with the understanding or the definition of worship being bowing and prostrating. So the Prophet ﷺ wanted to correct this, un this wrong understanding, this limited understanding of worship, of shirk. He said, did they not use to rule what is unlawful as lawful and you obeyed them and what was lawful as unlawful and you obeyed them? He said, indeed we did. He said, this is how you were slaves of these people. Fulfilling these conditions is an ongoing task that is easy when one is true with Allah Azza wa Jal. When one is sincere with Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah will help him and will enable him and it will be leading to the end result of inheriting authority upon the earth. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. الحمد لله على إحسانه والشكر له على توفيقه وامتنانه وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له تعظيما لشانه وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله الداعي إلى رضوانه ثم أما بعد One might say I feel there is a contradiction in what I'm hearing because we see many pious people, we see scholars teaching people Islam. We see committed and devoted worshippers who worship Allah Azza wa Jal. They go to Umrah, they recite Quran, they fast, they pray Qiyam within the Ummah. And we see Mujahideen who fight for the sake of Allah. Why then are we in a state of weakness, why don't we have authority and power? Well, because we have to differentiate between two definitions of worship. The individual worship and the communal worship at the level of a community or an ummah or a nation. The first one is one that entitles the individual for bliss and prosperity in this life and the hereafter as an individual. And it is certainly the first step towards the second one, which is, meaning the second one, the condition that has to be met in order for the promised fruit and prize from Allah Azza wa Jal to be given. See, the Ummah at large or the communities, the Muslim communities or states have, have to be in general practicing and committed, pious for that to be achieved. See, in the Islamic history, 
There were times that some parts of the Muslim world had the upper hand and others were oppressed. Yes, and at times you had the Ottoman Caliphate and you had the Mamalik in parts of Egypt and part, parts of greater Syria. And then al murabitun for example, in northern Africa. It was not all the time that all these states, regardless of their size compared to one another, it was not the case that all of them at the same time had the authority. So we're not necessarily talking about the entire ummah, though this will happen. So what I mean to say is that there are two things to regard about inheriting authority. It has to be the general description of the community, state, or the ummah. And that it starts with the individual practice. The last point I would like to address regarding inheriting authority and power is that just like Allah Azza wa Jal gives it and grants it to the ummah, He takes it away. How? If we lack, then we lose. If we fall short, then we're deprived. When Musa spoke to the children of Israel, he said, Asa Rabbukum ayuhlika aduwakum, wa yastakhlifakum fil ard, fayangum, kayfa ta'amalun. Perhaps your Lord will destroy your enemy and make you inherit authority upon the earth. But then he looks at how you behave, how you deal. Allah gives it in more, de more details in another verse. الَّذِينَ إِنْ مَكَّنَّاهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ أَقَامُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَآتَوا الزَّكَاةَ وَأَمَرُوا بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَنَهَوْا عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ Those who deserve to continuously have this authority and power, have the support of Allah Azza wa Jal, are those whom when we give them authority on earth, establish the prayers, pay zakah, enjoy good, and forbid evil. So don't think that it ends with authority. No, it's an ongoing process. As long as we want authority, then we must continue in reconciling with Allah Azza wa Jal, reforming our relationship with Allah Azza wa Jal, adhering to the religion of Allah Azza wa Jal, submit to the legislations of Allah Azza wa Jal and practice the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Once the ummah as an ummah lacks because there were certainly individuals who will be amongst the ummah during the time of prosperity and authority, who will be short in this regard? Who will lack? But we're talking about the majority. The general description of the ummah is that it's an ummah that is pious and practicing and committing and adhering to the legislation of Allah Azza wa Jal. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal with His beautiful names and perfect attributes to enable us to strive and spread this spirit amongst the Ummah until we reach a state when we become deserving to inherit authority upon the earth. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma aghfir lana dhunubana wa israfana fi amrina wa thabbit aqdamana wa ansurna ala al-qawmi al-kafirin. Allahumma aghfir lana dhunubana wa israfana fi amrina wa thabbit aqdamana wa ansurna ala al-qawmi al-kafirin.